My area of research is called crystal engineering and it deals with the design of organic molecular crystals with specific properties which may be chemical, physical and so on. And the challenge in crystal engineering is that people didn't think that you could pre-design crystals, make crystals to order in fact as it were. But now over the methodologies that have been developed over the last 20, 30, 40 years, we have much more confidence in being able to build up a crystal from scratch. And today I may say that there may be two, three hundred independent research groups all over the world. The University of Bologna being an important one here with Professor Braga and uh, who have specialized in the subject of crystal engineering. So it is really a very, very wide discipline today. See, the 17 goals are extremely overarching. They are wide. They cover all of humanity. I think just practically every field of human endeavor has to come into the picture in order to realize these goals. And among this, of course, science is very important. If you look at those 17 goals, I would say in practically all of the 17, some kind of scientific endeavor and activity is required. I mean, in my part of the world, India, China, and so on, with the rapid industrialization and growth, we are countries who have had relatively nothing and now trying to grow very quickly. Pollution and other things, climate control, these become extremely essential. I mean, the name chemistry itself is associated with pollution. And I think chemistry departments, chemical research, my own subject of crystal engineering, we are really interested, for example, there is a whole branch of crystal engineering that is concerned with the adsorption of gases. So you have polluting gases like oxides of sulfur, oxides of nitrogen, phosphorus and so on, which can be absorbed by these porous materials. And so there is actually quite a bit of work going on in chemistry, which has to do with reduction of pollution today. Some things are already happening. I think if you take gender equality, I think many universities the world over are taking care to see that there is a much better representation for women in scientific activities, in managerial positions, in positions of authority. And the other thing is about industry. The fact that universities and industries have to work much, much closer. I mean, this has been going on, I know, but I think it can be much closer and now to the point where university and industry actually have to work together, in fact. One of the things that has been mentioned about the education system is that we are not training students with the adequate skill sets that are required for the important tasks of, say, 2025, 2030, and so on. And the whole business of turning out, say, our curricula have to change. We are turning out one-dimensional students today who know a great deal of their small area of work, but they don't know much outside. So we need to teach students differently, which means the teachers also have to think differently. So I would say that we are at a cusp of a revolution, even with regards to education. Scientists too are aware of their social commitments and social responsibilities. You see, we scientists should not be confused with people in ivory towers and simply doing our own thing without a care, without any emotion, without any cognizance of what's going to happen to their results in society in general. So I feel this is the whole business of bringing scientists, social scientists, economists, planners, politicians, all these kinds of people together. And I think that is why this is a very good time to do these things. To put it all together, I think the role of a university is extremely, extremely important in realizing these 17 goals of the UN. <laughs>